Hello, welcome back. We are building a movie app with the best coding practices and tools out there. In previous videos, we have covered data sources, repositories, use cases, and a dependency injection. In this video, we will see how we will create the top bar of the home screen. Before we go ahead, we have to do a little bit of setup for the UI. Let's some, do something about assets. I have gathered some assets and put them in the GitHub already. You can check out master branch or 5 underscore home screen underscore carousel branch. You can take them from there. Now open perfect.yml and update the assets there as well. Copy the assets from the GitHub and put in your folder and then give the path. Give the path as assets slash svgs and assets slash pngs. Now we are done with the assets. Let's do some colors. In the presentation themes folder, create a new file theme underscore color dot art. This file will have all the colors required in the application except for those which are already defined in the Flutter framework. Movie app only uses three colors throughout the application, so it's a very quick process. Create class app color. Add a private constructor since it is not required to instantiate the class. Declare the colors Vulcan, Royal Blue, and Violet. Now, how do we name colors? You might often find naming colors in the app tedious. So, use this website and name your colors. Some colors would be hard to spell out, so you can name them anything you want, as I have done with the violet color in this app. Now we are done with the colors. Let's initialize the app. Open main.dart and clear out the main function which we have from our previous videos. You don't need async now, as we are using unawaited. In the future, we will need it when we do hive initialization for local storage. Now, as per the official Flutter documentation, this is the glue that binds the framework to the Flutter engine. As we are only supporting portrait till now, you should force it to have portrait up orientation. If in the future you support other orientations, you can remove this code. Initialize get it to provide us with dependencies. This is already covered in the previous video. Instead of having the app in the file itself, make this class small by moving out the material app widget in movie underscore app dot dart. More on that very soon. We all know, even though it is claimed that Flutter can create the UI for any screen size, but in certain situ situations, when you give fixed width and height to a widget, they don't seem to be proportional to the screen for obvious reasons. I have been using Flutter Screen Util package in my recent work and this plugin helps me in creating pixel perfect UI in Flutter. With recent advancements in mobile form factors with some of them having notches at top or bottom of the screen, the current calculation of scale height should also consider the notches. So, Go to Flutter screen to GitHub repository and copy the code. Now create a new file in screen util subfolder in common folder and paste the code in a in that file. You have to change two things in this file. First, Default width and default height are the width and height of the designs that the designer has used to create the mockup. They are not your mobile screen width and height. If you don't want to specify the default width and default height, you can do so by invoking screenutil.init with these two parameters width and height before returning the material app. The new scale height factor now considers top and bottom notches if present in some phones. 
If you have seen my previous videos, I have shown you how to use a screen util in the dimensions. You generally call a screen util dot set width 100, screen util dot set height 100, or screen util dot sp 100. Here, 100 is the dimension that you scale according to the screen dimensions. To reduce some boilerplate, let's create extension for this. In the common slash extensions folder, create a new file size underscore extensions dot dart. Now create an extension on num here and add w, h and sp as the extensions. Now this is straightforward. Now you can invoke the methods like 100.w, 100.h or 100.sp whenever required. You don't need a lot of boilerplate code. As you have seen, we directly used 100. And this is straightforward. But imagine 100 is used 10, 20 times in the application. Will you every time use 100 there? Answer is no. This will actually consume more memory. Instead, declare all the dimensions in one file and use that from there, like we did with the color file. In the common slash constants folder, create a file size underscore constants dot dart. Create class sizes and declare dimensions as static const double. You can add as many dimensions as possible here, whichever are used in your application. This is very similar to how we created app color. Throughout the application, you will use sizes dot diamond under 100, underscore 100. In this video, I will show only one text style, but we will create the file where all the text styles will go. We will use Google Fonts, so let's add Google underscore fonts dependency. Open postpack.yml and add the dependency there with version 1.1.0. In the presentation themes folder again, create a file theme underscore text dot dart. Create a class in similar fashion as sizes and app color. We are using Poppins font. Create a white headline 6. Refer this guideline for the font sizes from the material design. Now by copying the Poppins headline, we add dot sp so that the text sizes are also according to the screen width. Create a public static method that returns the text theme. This will be used by material app. Rest all methods can be private then. Now let's work on the material app. As you can recall, before creating screen underscore util dot dot, I updated main dot dot with movie app. In the presentation folder, create a new file movie underscore app dot dart. Here, create movie app as a stateless widget. Initialize screen util so that we can use it while defining. Use material app widget with debug banner as false or true, totally your choice. Now define theme data of the application. Make Vulkan as the primary as well as a scaffold background color. All our screens have Vulkan as their background color. Also don't forget to give the text theme that we just declared in the theme text file. Now our first home screen will be home screen. So define home, home screen there. Yes, we are yet to design this. So let's head on to that. In this video, I will show only the top part of home screen as this video also contains basic starting setup. Before we move to UI, let's add the block as well, which will manage the state of our carousal. Let's add the flutter block dependency in the puffspec.yml. In the presentation slash blocks folder. With the help of block extension in VS Code, create a new block with movie underscore carousal name. Rename the auto-generated block folder with movie underscore carousal. 
you can see block, state and event files auto generated for you. In movie carousal event dot dart, add a event carousal load event. Extend the event with abstract class because the blocks definition accepts the type of movie carousal event. This event will be dispatched when user comes to the screen. Default index will give us flexibility to decide which movie will be in center of our carousal at the start. A const constructor with default index as 0 if not passed. Props as explained in previous videos is used for comparison between two objects of same type. Now in movie carousal state dot dot create three state. Movie carousal initial to be emitted as first state when the block initializes. Movie carousal error to be emitted if there is an error thrown from the API. I will not observe this state in this video because we will consider it when we do error handling. Third will be movie carousal loaded. This will be emitted with list of trending movies and default index which is passed from carousal load event earlier. Now in the movie carousal block dot dot declare get trending use case. Get trending will be a final variable. Clearly movie carousal block is dependent on get trending if you remember what I mean from the pre previous video about dependency injection. Now replace the to do with call to get trending and handle the response the way we did it in main.dart in the previous video. Handle if the event dispatched is carousal load event. Call the get trending use case with no params. Use the fold operator to handle the response. When there is an error, yield error state which we will take in the later videos, not handling this state in, the vid in this video. Now when the success, yield success state with movies and the default index. Before we move to widgets using this, let's add the dependency in get underscore it dot dot. This time we will declare the factory because we want a new instance of the block whenever we need the carousal block. Since this is a home screen, the first screen, you can also declare this block as singleton. It's totally your choice. We are ready with the block, colors, fonts and dimensions. Let's jump to the UI creation now. We will create the widgets in a bottom up approach. Here is the list of all the widgets that we will be doing in this video. Home screen, logo widget, movie app bar widget, movie carousal widget, movie card widget, movie page view widget, animated movie card widget, movie backdrop widget, movie data widget and separator widget. Let's start with home screen. We are starting our first journey. Create home folder in journeys folder. In the journeys home folder, create a new file home underscore screen dot dart. Now create a stateful widget home screen. Initialize the movie carousal block from get it in the init state method. When home screen is initialized, Dispatch the only event for movie carousal block. This will make an API call and yield the movie carousal loaded or movie carousal error state. In dispose, don't forget to close the block. The home screen has two sections, top and bottom. To make these sections proportional for any mobile size, we will use fractionally sized box. The top section is 60% of the screen and bottom section is 40% of the screen. Let's create a stack with two fractionally sized boxes. When you use fractionally sized box, you should use stackfit.expand because this allows a stack to take all the available space. Fractionally sized box that use fractions to decide on the proportion of a screen that it will take. 
The top part should have top center as its alignment. The top section is 60% of the screen. Hence, it should be aligned top with 60% of the height of the available space, which in this case is a complete screen height. Once we add movie carousal widget, it will go in this part, replacing placeholder. The bottom fractionally sized box obviously will have bottom center as its alignment. The height factor of this remaining part of a screen will be of course 0.4. Movie tabbed widget which will come in next video will replace the placeholder widget. If you run the app with this code, you will see the screen perfectly divided into two parts. Also check this screen in different screen sizes. Let's move to the logo widget. As I said, we will develop widgets from bottom to top. So before moving to actual movie carousal widget. Let's create a logo widget that will go in movie app bar and movie app bar goes in movie carousel widget. In the presentation widgets folder, create a new file logo.dart. Logo is a stateless widget with dynamic height that will be provided by the calling widget. This is, a imp this is important here because the same logo widget will be used in the navigation drawer when we implement navigation drawer. Constructor with height as required field and add some assertions that make this widget fail safe. With these two assertions, this widget unknowingly can't be called with the height as null or less than equals to zero. Just use the logo image from assets slash pngs folder Notice that we are using .h extension to perfectly give the height to this logo. Now comes the movie app bar. Even though this app has only one instance of the custom app bar, it is always good to create a separate widget for maintainability and scalability. We also use SVG images now. So let's add flutter underscore SVG dependency in puffpack.yml. In the presentation slash widgets folder, create a new file movie underscore app underscore bar dot dart. Now, because we are creating our own app bar, it is necessary to have padding from left, right and top. Notice we are considering the notch height in padding top to make it work for phones with the notch at the top. It is useless to mention the use of dot w when considering the horizontal spacing and dot h when considering the vertical spacing. Use row to lay out the elements in horizontal. In the row, at start and end, add the two icon buttons, one being the SVG picture and other being taken from the Flutter framework itself. The remaining space in between these two images, use the logo widget. Let's create the movie carousal widget now. This widget requires the list of movies and the default movie index that will appear in the center of the carousal. Let's use the block to get the fetched movies. Use block provider to provide the movie carousal block instance down the tree. You don't need to create the block here as it is already done in the init state. Just use the instance of that. Use block builder to read the current state of movie carousal block. The builder takes in context and the state. When loading of trending movies is success, we show the previously used stack having two sections top and bottom.
when loading of trending movies is error, we show an empty size box as of now. Later in coming videos, I will show you how to handle UI when error. If you remember, the movie carousal loaded state contains movies and default index. So, we will create movie carousal widget that will be used in top section of the stack. In the presentation slash journeys slash home slash movie carousal folder, create a new file movie underscore carousal underscore widget dot dot. Movie carousal widget is a stateless widget that works on list of movies and the default index. Create a constructor with both the fields as required and add the assertion that we have been adding everywhere for the default index. Assertions is very good way for reducing the amount of errors when working individually or as part of a team. A column with just two elements, first being the movie app bar that we created before. Next in column is movie page view before movie app bar that we will create now. This widget also takes in the list of movies and the default index for obvious reasons. Let's create the movie card view card widget. In general, movie page view is just a page view that takes in multiple children. Each child is a movie card widget. So let's create that first. We are about to load image from internet. So let's add a dependency. Open perfect.yml and add cached underscore network underscore image dependency with 2.2.0 plus 1 version. In the presentation slash journey slash home slash movie underscore carousal folder, create a new file movie underscore card underscore widget dot dot. You will need movie ID in the future when we tap on this card to move to the movie details screen. The poster path is required to load the image. This will be taken from movie entity and will be in this format. Use cached network image with the image URL prepended with the base image URL. In data sources video, I have explained the use of base underscore image underscore URL. Use clip R rect to clip the image with a border radius. This will add the curves on all the vertices of the images. Use gesture detector to enable tappable events on the card. Use material to give elevation to the card. Let's create the movie page view now. In the presentation journeys home movie carousal folder, create a new file movie underscore page underscore view dot dot. Create a stateful widget with list of movies and initial page. The initial page is same as default index. So apply same assertion to this as well. In the state class of movie page view, declare a page controller. In init state method, instantiate page controller with viewport fraction as 0.7. Viewport fraction decides how much screen share each item of page view will take. In the same file, create the UI element now. Use pageview.builder in the build method. Builder is efficient when you don't know about how many children will be drawn. To manipulate how much part is visible on the screen, we use page controller. In the item builder, based on index return the movie card widget. Generally we get 20 movies from the API. So item builder will create 20 cards. When you are in between of a complete scroll transaction, page snapping true makes it complete the scroll action. You should mention the item count because item builder will be called only when the with the indices greater than or equal to zero and less than the item count. In short, it is a for loop with for 
int i equals to 0 i less than length i plus plus. We are doing very safe code here, but still if movies are null, then this will throw error. So use safe operators like double question mark and return 0. To update the backdrop image and title of the movie below page view, we will need to get the callback when the page view is scrolled. Wrap the page view dot builder with a container so that we can give height and margin to it. To maintain some space between movie app bar and other details of movie, we need the vertical margin. Once we add the animation to the movie card widget, we will need the height. So after some calculation, 35% of the screen height is the perfect value here. Don't hard code any heights in this case, using ratios is always the better choice. As we used 0.6 for fractionally sized box in home screen, 0.35 here makes total sense. When you run, you will see the page view horizontally scrollable with all the movie card widgets touching each other. We need to add animation while changing the pages. Also give some spacing between each individual movie card widget. Let's create animated movie card widget. This widget will animate the movie card's widget's height using the page controller's value. In the presentation journeys home movie underscore carousel folder, create a new file again animated underscore movie underscore card underscore widget dot dart. Create a stateless widget with two extra fields index and page controller that will be used to calculate the height and in child just call the movie card widget from here. We will now wrap this with animated builder and determine the value that will manipulate the height of cards in focus and that not in focus. If you want complete explanation of this code, I have already explained similar stuff in my animated carousal video. Please check that. Update the build method of animated movie card widget. Wrap the movie card widget with animated builder. In the animation, use the page controller so that when page controller value changes, the animated builder will redraw the child with the builder. Value starts with 1 and when you scroll, the value changes to 0 0.9 over the frames. If statement executes when you scroll else executes in the default state. For height, we use value to transform the height of the container. This complete logic is very well explained in the video. Do please check it out. Now in movie page view, instead of movie card widget, use animated movie card widget. This is self-explanatory, you just pass in the index and the page controller. Now run the app and you will see the carousel cards animating. Now that we are done with the movie carousel widget, let's move to movie backdrop widget. What we want to achieve here? This widget is behind the movie carousel widget and shows the backdrop image of the movie in the focus. On scrolling the movie page view, you load the backdrop image of the movie which is in the focus. So first create a block because image will change on the scroll. So this widget is not a fixed widget, it, the image will change for itself. In the presentation slash blocks folder, create a new folder movie underscore backdrop. You will create this folder automatically by using the VS code extension for blocks. It will generate three files.
इन मूवी बैकड्रॉप इवेंट डॉट डार्ट एड मूवी बैकड्रॉप चेंज्ड इवेंट दिस इवेंट विल विल बी डिस्पैच्ड व्हेन द पेज चेंजेस इन मूवी पेज व्यू एंड इट टेक्स द करेंट मूवी इन मूवी बैकड्रॉप स्टेट डॉट डार्ट क्रिएट टू स्टेट्स फर्स्ट विल बी इनिशियल स्टेट बिकॉज बिफोर एनी पेज चेंजेस यू कैन नॉट लोड एनी इमेज देन मूवी बैकड्रॉप चेंज दिस इज अ सिंपल इवेंट दिस इज अ सिंपल स्टेट एज इट जस्ट टेक्स इन द मूवी इन द यू आई वी विल फैच द बैकड्रॉप पाथ एंड टाइटल इन मूवी बैकड्रॉप ब्लॉक डॉट डार्ट हैंडल द सिंगल इवेंट दिस इज स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड वी आर जस्ट यील्डिंग द स्टेट विद द मूवी रिसीव फ्रॉम द इवेंट नाउ वी हैव अ न्यू ब्लॉक सो लेट्स रजिस्टर इट इन get underscore it dot dot register the block as a factory update home screen dot dot to get instance of movie backdrop block and use multi block provider now as we have two blocks now in the home screen fetch the instance of movie backdrop block from get it in dispose don't forget to close the block multi block provider takes array of block pro block provider so add one more block in the same fashion as movie carousel block now in movie page view dot dot dispatch the movie backdrop changed event when the page changes since home screen provided the block it can be used in the descendants by using block provider dot off context you need to provide the type movie backdrop block you will dispatch the event in with the movie in focus with the help of index now Let's add the UI now in Movie Carousel widget. Since the backdrop is behind the movie page view, use stack with fit as stack fit dot expand. Add the movie backdrop widget first to have it in the background and everything else on the foreground. This column contains the movie app bar and movie page view as shown previously. In the presentation journey is home movie carousel folder create a new file movie backdrop backdrop widget dot dot This is a simple stateless widget with block builder giving us the selected movie we can say use cached network image with backdrop path and use fit height In case the state is movie backdrop initial we can't show anything in the UI so use size box dot shrink if you noticed we are using the frosty glassy look on the backdrop image for that we need a layer on the top so use a stack for that to allow the image to take full width and height let's use the height factor and width factor as one in fractional sized box the top layer will have backdrop filter so apply a filter with 5 as sigma x and sigma y give the full width to the container to cover full screen with height as minimum 1 and color as transparent if you give height as 0 backdrop will not work and if you give any color other than transparent there will be a strip of that color on the top so we will also have to give the bottom radius So wrap the stack with clip r rect with 40 dot w as the bottom radius. Also, this backdrop is in a stack and should not take full height. So 
wrap this with fractionally sized box with 0.7 as height factor and the top alignment. Run the app and when you change the page, you will see the backdrop image. Why are you not seeing the backdrop image before changing page? I mean to say, why are you not seeing the backdrop image at the time when carousal loads for the first time? Because we are dispatching event only on page changed and not at the time of loading movies. So let's do that. We need movie backdrop block instance in movie carousal block so that we can dispatch movie backdrop changed event from movie carousal block. Update movie carousal block to accept movie backdrop block in the constructor. Declare the movie backdrop block as final and use it in the constructor. Dispatch the event with movie as de movie at default index which is 0 at the start. There is a block builder in movie backdrop widget that will receive this event and load the image for first movie. In get underscore it dot dot update the registration of movie carousel block as well. Use get it, get it instance to provide us with the instance of movie backdrop block in movie carousel block. Now if you run, you will still see that the backdrop is not loaded until first page change. This is happening because of instance resolution. The movie backdrop block instance in home screen and that in movie carousel block is different. But they should be same. There are two ways to make the same. Use singleton for movie backdrop block so that it doesn't get initialized when it is called again. Or you can use the movie backdrop block from movie carousel block in the home screen. We are going with the second approach. Open home screen dot dot and update in its state. This time, do not take the instance from get it. Instead, take it from movie carousel block. This same instance will be used in the movie carousel block to dispatch movie backdrop changed event of movie backdrop block. Now if you run the app, you will see the backdrop image load from the initialization itself. We are almost done with our widgets, but there are two things that are still left. First, the title of the movie which is in focus. So we will put that in movie data widget. To show the title of the movie of current page in movie page view, we will use movie backdrop blocks state. In, pre in the presentation journeys home movie carousal folder, create a new file movie data widget dot art. Movie data widget is a stateless widget. Use block builder for movie backdrop block. If state is movie backdrop changed, then show the text with movie title. To properly lay out the title, you can restrict the number of lines. Use the overflow property in case text does not fit in one line. Use headline 6 font, sty font style that we created in theme text. Always use from theme.off context so that when we change theme to dark or any other theme, app remain consistent. Now. Add the movie data widget below movie page view in movie carousal widget. Now if you run the app, you will see that you see the title whenever you change the page of movie page view. Last thing will be separator. In the next video. I will show the tabbed view at the bottom. To make it separate out with carousal, let's add a simple separator. In the presentation widgets folder, create a new file separator.dart. This is a simple container with width and height. 
we could have used divider but divider does not have radius and uses indents to decide the width padding from top and bottom for separation to make round edges use box decoration with border radius give simple gradient also to the separator now run the app for the final time and play with it this was all about creating carousel and top part in the home screen with initial setup see you in the next video thanks for watching if this video helped you in learning something or other then your like will help me a lot i would love to hear back from you if you are new to my channel do subscribe and toggle on the notifications so that you never miss the future tutorials